today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Derek and Jason here. How you doing, Jason? I'm um, well. You're very excited about the Oscars, aren't you, Derek? Uh, what a night. I mean, the, sc- the clock skipped forward an hour, but I didn't even mind losing the hour <laughs> of sleep because I was so excited and buzzing about a very unusual Oscars, a, a, a historic event where everything everywhere all at once won everything everywhere, basically everywhere. All, all at once. You, you and I both saw the movie. We talked about it at the time. Uh, we, we thought, I think we both liked it a lot, but maybe we, it wasn't our favorite movie of the year, but it's hard to argue that it wasn't the most innovative, highest concept movie of the year that did a lot of things really, really well. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was incredible. It didn't feel like a weighty Oscar movie. It had some quirky elements to it, obviously very influenced by the MTV generation. There were references. It was highly edited. It was a sort of pastiche. There was a ratatouille raccoon pulling a chef's hair. It didn't feel like your normal (laughs) Oscars fair in, 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 a lot of respects. Did you but say it was, it was heavily edited? You know, there, there were so many images that were floating at the screen that it was uh, <laughs> sort of stroke-inducing at yeah. times uh, for, for older viewers, which is why I thought the yeah. Academy, which is largely older viewers, would be put off by some elements, but that just wasn't the case. They I won had, everything they were up I, for, basically. I thought that was the real key, that we didn't know how a more staid Oscar committee, you know, more staid than the actual public at large, movie going public, would react to it. I think that the, it, was benef- it benefited a lot by the movies that were targeting it or were vying for the Best Picture Oscar weren't necessarily in their wheelhouse either. I think Tar might have been in the movie, movie that was most direct towards an older, most uh, sort of conservative audience. But well, that, I would say your favorite movie of the year was the oldest movie, and it also won a lot of awards, which yeah. is which is All Quiet on the Western Front, which had previously won Best Picture back in the 30s. Yeah, uh, it was up again. But, it won a bunch of awards. Yeah. Below it's the hard. Line. It's hard to chose, you know. But the, back in the 30s was, I believe, an English language version of the movie. This was a German language version. We had Parasite a few years ago that won Best Foreign Language, or I think it's International Film uh, f- uh, in in Korean. And then also won Best Picture. But I think it's the only time, right, that a foreign language film has won Best Picture? Yeah, I believe that's right. And people were differentiating. They said that was about, that was an international feature. This one is the first Best Picture winner about Asian Americans. And so it's a historic night. You had two winners in the acting categories with with Kiwi Kwan for Supporting Actor. Michelle Yeoh won for for Best Actress over Kate Blanchett, who is absolutely a and, juggernaut. And can we, can we, Mel Street, can Mel we stop for a second? And I really like liked everywhere, uh, everything everywhere all at once. I thought it was better than Tar. I didn't think Tar was a great movie. I think it's hard to say that Michelle, I believe it's pronounced Yo, Yo or yes. Michelle Yo's performance was better than Kate Blanchett. And Michelle Yo was great. Kate Blanchett's performance was so hard to pull off. It was multilingual. She spoke in a flu, uh, fluent German, which she didn't speak going in. She had to learn it for the role. It was three hours of the camera on her face close up for three consecutive hours. I thought it was one of the great performances, honestly, in movie history from an actress. And I was just that was one result I was disappointed in. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at Michelle Yeoh's performance, it was incredible, but it was sort of traditional in some sense because the movie movie had a sort of sentimentality to it. It was I I really did enjoy the movie, but it's a mother daughter story, which we've seen before. Perhaps not in this way. She also shared something like that. She also shared the screen with other actors, all of whom one, right? With, with multiple other actors. Kate Blanchett was just on the screen. You've, you've just got to see it to appreciate the brilliance of, of that of that acting performance. I, I'm disappointed. I, I Again, I just went into it thinking of all the... I didn't think Tar was a great movie. It certainly wasn't a perfect movie. I thought her performance was as close to perfect as acting can get. And in that way, it was one disappointment for me. Yeah, and the other big uh, winning Oscar was uh, Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Sort of a comeback story. This this was for The Whale. He was sort of in a, in a heated race with Colin Farrell from Banshees for uh, Banshees of Inner Sharon. He didn't end up winning. Uh, Brendan Fraser had this big comeback story after the Golden Globes fiasco he, that he had yeah. been involved with many years ago. Gave a tearful, really, sort of re- really impassioned, a passion speech. I mean, it, it, it was the only category in which somebody from everything, everywhere wasn't nominated, <laughs> and so that opened the door I, for, for Brendan Fraser. It's, you got to believe, based on the rest of the night, had everywhere. Everything Everywhere had a Best Actor nominee. It probably would have won that as well, uh, based on everything else we saw. But Brendan Fraser, really heartfelt speech. People love to give Oscars. The Academy loves to give Oscars to actors and actresses who 
were once known as being really famous and had this comeback story. And we see, I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is a great example, not an actress who was ever really taken that seriously, I think, for her acting chops, uh, although she's very famous, but then has the, and obviously comes from Oscar, you know, legendary Oscar winning uh, parents. Oh, did you see her say, this one's for you, mom and dad? Her mom, Janet Lee and Tony Curtis, her mom and dad, yeah. I thought was uh, in the, in the, year of Nepo babies, her to give the sort of tribute she's spoken about being the ultimate Nepo baby, so it's I okay found that sort parents, of... parents, though, no matter what. Right? No, sure, it's just her parents happen to be very famous Hollywood So talk royalty. a little bit, Derek, about Jimmy Kimmel. He certainly did a lot, paid a lot of attention to last year's Will Smith, Chris Rock debacle. Yeah, so everyone was, there were tons of prop bets about how many references would be made to the slap of last year, and Jimmy Kimmel really didn't disappoint. He got right into it. He, he came out, uh, gave his monologue, and during the monologue he joked that if anyone commits an act of violence, they're going to be awarded the Oscar for Best Actor and permitted to give a 19-minute long speech, obviously a reference to Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, and then afterwards everyone sort of being quiet and awkwardly watching him accept the award for Best Actor for his role in King Richard. We know this is a special night for you. We uh, want you to have fun. We want you to feel safe. And most importantly, we want me to feel safe. So we have strict policies in place. If anyone in this theater commits an act of violence at any point during the show, you will be awarded the Oscar for Best Actor <laughs> and permitted to give a 19-minute long speech. <laughs> no, but seriously, the Academy has a crisis team in place. If anything unpredictable or violent happens during the ceremony, just do what you did last year. Nothing. <laughs> Sit there and do absolutely nothing. Maybe even give the assailant a hug. The gag, uh, you know, I was interested in hearing the receipt of it because, you know, Will Smith has tried to turn the page now. He is, you know, you know, you know, he's given a couple apologies. Chris Rock has done his special. He'd really like to move on from this and have a different conversation. But this really lit the flame. It looks like the Academy was OK with making jokes about this embarrassing incident at their telecast. last yeah, year. Yeah, I don't think they had much of a choice. I also think that this is the, the final nail in the coffin of that story. Like, OK, we've done it once. I think next year they, they, these jokes will not be there. I think it was necessary to ha have it would have been Really awkward had the Academy pretended like it didn't exist. You know, and Kimmel, it was it was the constant thread running through his entire his entire night, both his monologue at the beginning, which you talked about, but then multiple jokes. He and he ended the show. He began the show with a Will Smith joke, and he ended the entire telecast with going over to one of those boards that said, you know, number of <laughs> years, years without an incident. Years yeah. without an incident, like one of those boards you see in a union factory about days without it without a safety incident. Years without an incident at the Oscars, and he changes it from zero to one and he walks off. So I think that was a good way to wrap things up. I, I tend to agree. I think he was sort of pitch perfect. You know, Jimmy Kimmel is snarky, but he's not Ricky Gervais. He's right. sort of a, a middle ground between a totally benign sort of host like uh, Billy Crystal, who won't make any controversial jokes, and someone like Ricky Gervais, who will push the envelope too far. You've got Jimmy Kimmel really, you know, well suited to this because celebrities really like him. He has his uh, late show that he brings these guests on, so he's comfortable making fun of them, and they're comfortable receiving some of the barbs in good nature. I thought it was actually a very well done, uh, you know, sort of show and hosting it. So I, I mentioned earlier that I, I loved Kate Blanchett's uh, uh, performance, but nevertheless, Michelle, you know, it's, it's, we don't want to overlook what an accomplishment this is for her. This is a longtime actress who's been around Hollywood forever. She's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She's she crouching was originally tiger. in the, like, right. you know, it, flying through the air. And she, she had Crazy Rich Asians a couple of years ago, which really sort of put her on, I think, more of a mainstream uh, American map, and she became a really big deal. And then she capitalizes on that, uh, to, and gets cast in this role, wins the Best Actress Award. And, you know, she was pretty clear in her speech about what an important moment this was for women and for Asian American actresses and actors. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. This is proof that dreams dream big and dreams do come true. And ladies, don't let anybody tell you you are ever past your prime. <laughs> Never give up. A little shot at Don Lemon there. Wow. <laughs> so so jaws were dropping that she shaded Don Lemon during her acceptance speech. I do think it was intentional. I think the word, you know, yeah. past your prime is obviously a nod at the Don Lemon incident with Nikki Haley, where he said Nikki Haley was past her prime and so forth, had that awkward incident. You know, Michelle Yeoh winning, Jamie Lee Curtis winning, this really was the triumph of the narrative had always been that women past a certain age couldn't really succeed in Hollywood. That was 
you know, obliterated last night. Jamie Lee Curtis is 64 years old. The one other interesting note is Jamie Lee Curtis uh, for supporting actress was against Angela Bassett, who is also 64 years old and considered, uh, you know, someone who should have their Oscar by now, but doesn't. And she kind of shaded her. She sat down during Jamie Lee Curtis standing up. Everyone was getting a rousing ovation. And Angela Passett didn't really scowl or, or, or make a face, but didn't really sort of uh, show much support towards Jamie Lee Curtis. I thought that was an interesting moment. I did, too. I, you, you know, th- this, I think, gets into who the Academy voters are um, in that it, primarily because, you know, Angela Bassett was in a superhero movie. Let's Let's not sugarcoat it. And all of her acting, and, and I'm not breaking new ground here. This is what other people have said, and I'm sort of just parodying them. I, Angela Bassett did 100% of her acting in front of a green screen with baubles on her head, right? And it's just I think that the Academy doesn't take – doesn't appreciate those roles. Not, appreciate's the wrong word because it sounds loaded. Doesn't look at those performances in the same light they they look at performances that are done – Face to face, where you're 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 in dialogue. There's actual scenery around you. There's actual sort of more reality to them, and I think that's true. You know, even the when they do the little uh, the, when they show each actress in their you know ten seconds of their each one of their performances before announcing the award, Angela Bassett is purely in front of a green screen. They didn't have her acting with anybody else. They have her had her delivering a monologue for ten seconds in front of you know flying spaceships and blue people behind her. I agree with you. And I've read a lot of this that there's sort of um, the, the Academy doesn't want to acknowledge the greatness of Marvel films, even though we're what 15, almost 20 years into this MCU experiment. It's obviously very successful, but they want to differentiate art from commercial success. And I guess that's also true in that Top Gun didn't win a lot yeah. of awards, and neither did Avatar. Um, so Black Panther wins for best makeup, I believe, or sorry, best costuming, and yes. and that was a touching speech as well. So they're willing to give some of these below the line special effects types of awards. But here's what's interesting: so Jamie Lee Curtis wins for a multiversal story. So remember, that that yes. is not exactly not a superhero movie. It's obviously not in the MCU, but it's about a multiverse. There's a lot of special effects in editing. She's wearing hot dog fingers and wearing a sort of ridiculous IRS costume, which I read yesterday was based on a Getty image of IRS worker. So her whole uh-huh. costume, if you look up Getty images of IRS that's workers, funny. that's what they based the character on. So it was kind of silly, almost cartoonish in its own way. And that's why I thought, you know, I, I think Angela Bassett could say, well, you're giving it to a cartoon. Yes, it's not a Marvel comic book, well, it's but it's kind not, of a cartoonish She didn't movie. really have a green screen role either, right? Fair it, enough. It was she a role, was in yeah. a set. And also, just, just to clarify, Derek, you had mentioned that Angela Bassett looking for that Oscar. She actually won Best Actress for What's Love Got to Do With It. Back oh, in, then I feel differently. Back, I thought she was still night. waiting. So she has her Best Actress. And Jamie Lee Curtis uh, didn't. Our producer Wilde is looking at me and shaking his head as if I'm an idiot. Uh, it's possible she was. I think just, she was just nominated. just nominated for that. My my mistake. All right, so yeah. two nominations, zero wins for Angela Bassett, which is strange, right? Because you think of Angela Bassett as one of the great living actresses. I certainly do. She always delivers a strong performance, and that's why I thought she had a good chance of actually landing the trophy this year. Cause... Yeah, but uh, obviously, it's a, this was everything everywhere's year. Uh, they were not going to be held back. The Academy apparently loved that movie because I think it won every certainly every major award that it was up for. Uh, we mentioned that it didn't win for. Best actor because it didn't have a nominee, but picture, director, actress, supporting actor, supporting actress, and best screenplay. It ran the entire ta- table of important, the more important, uh, m- more well-known I, awards. I mean, you've got a handful of movies that do this kind of thing. Obviously, most recently, you have Silence of the Lambs, which did win the Big Five. This wasn't eligible, as you said, for the Big Five because it didn't have an actor nom. Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I mean, it's a very short list of movies that run all of the the above-the-line categories. Uh, Return of the King, the Lord of the Rings movie, won 11 for 11, but many of those were below the line. None of them were for acting nominations. Well, same with Titanic, right? I think Titanic was nominated for 17, won most of the big ones. Although, no, no, it wasn't even nominated for either the acting awards. I I, I don't think maybe... maybe, uh... Kate Winslet was was nominated. I, I don't know, but it, it was overlooked from an acting perspective. But won all of the technical awards, which so, is uh, you know obvious because of the movie. Right. I want to take a step back. Do you think that this ushers in a? Is it a one off? Does this feel sui generis because the movie was just such a phenomenon and it sort of caught steam at the right time uh, in the award ceremony at Kiwi Kwan? A lot of stars were aligning that there was a feel good comeback story. There was Michelle Yeoh, who was an older actress, uh, winning again. So there were a lot of things that happened. 
that don't necessarily mean that we now will always award the quirky sort of indie movie. That said, A24, which Brendan Fraser's movie, The Whale, was an A24 movie as well, swept all of these big categories. And A24 is kind of a an indie kind of studio. Yeah, it's it's not Warner much, Brothers. Very much an indie studio. I mean, they've they've now signed contracts with Apple and others to do to do lots of things. But it, it's it's really it's really something that this studio that most people haven't heard of swept every single major Oscar. They've been uh, around uh, 10 years, Jason. They've won yeah. two Best Pictures already. It's pretty remarkable. It, it really is run. remarkable. They've also won two Best Actors now that they have Brendan Fraser and Mahershala Ali. Uh, you, you, they've just, they've and now they have Best Actress. Uh, it, it just, it, I think there's a second, they had Brie Larson as well who won Best Actress. So this tiny little studio, comparatively small studio, is now destroying the big boys. So what um, do you think happens? Do the major studios start to play the indie game or do they stick with their Marvel and DC universes, just make a ton of money and basically Basically, cede the territory to the aesthetic tastes of A24 to win all the awards. I, I think the shareholders of Warner Brothers and uh, Disney, etc., are like, you know, we'd rather have the cash returns than we would the statuettes. Uh, I, I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. I think they're they're in their own game. They sort of play in different fields now. Although it's it's much cheaper to make the A24 type movies. So I can imagine a Disney well, or a Mar- it, or, a, or a, you know Warner Brothers saying, ah, we'll play there as well. So everything everywhere really hits the home run, right? Because not only was it relatively inexpensive to make it, it's well over a hundred million dollars at the box office and it's now going to have a streaming life that's going to start this morning basically that is going to be enormous so it, you know that's one of these movies that not only does it take home all the statuettes is going to make big time nine figure returns on that investment this is the kind of thing that will sustain a24 for the next 20 years because of the success of this one film and frankly the whale on top of it and they've had lots of other successes that you know they're 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 doing quite well for themselves but it's it's hard to overstate what an important moment this is for a relatively small studio and the hundreds of millions of dollars are going to make as a result of this win i think you're right i'm excited about them they've obviously got great taste and one thing i'll say about everything everywhere all at once is even though it was a smaller production it didn't look like they saved money on it It no 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 i agree amazing as as a multiversal movie i think it looked better than something like doctor strange which is so obviously kind of green screened this was a bit more grounded and i'm excited to see what they do coming off of this because you're right now they're they're no longer a darling they're now going to be expected to come out with a a top contender for best picture year in and year out i want to talk about one more thing before we leave robert blake so robert blake passes away just uh shortly before the oscars telecast i think a few days but with enough time to be put in the in memoriam and jimmy kimmel uh (laughs) Cracked a joke about it. He said, uh, get out your telephones if you want to text text in uh, whether you think Robert Blake should make the in memoriam. Now it's time for the interactive part of the show. And uh, Everybody, please get out your phones, even at home. It's time to vote. If you think Robert Blake should be part of the in memoriam montage, <laughs> text give me a Blake to the number on your screen or to any number. Text that to your mother if you like. Message and data rates may apply. It got lots of laughs. Funny because Robert Blake was put on trial for murdering his wife. Although uh, acquitted. Acquitted, yes. Yes. Um, and so, I, I don't know. I, I'll be honest. When I heard the joke, I sort of chuckled. But then I was like, is that a very tasteless joke about... I think I had a family at some at some level. And we were joking about his death not being uh, uh, eligible for the in memoriam. I thought it was a little weird given the time. There are no tastelessness in jokes. They are <laughs> funny or they are not funny. And this one was funny. All right. We'll end it there. Uh, <laughs> see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.